Hello, my name is Mike Royce. Uh, I'm a principal consultant here at BRE. I lead a team of social researchers uh, at BRE, about uh, 10 of us in, in my team, um, looking at all aspects of uh, people in buildings and how they interact, uh, including health and safety and crime. We've done quite a lot of research on, on stairs and we've kind of looked at um, all the different aspects uh, stairs, uh, looked at dimensions, we've looked at uh, handrails and their use, we've looked at uh, landings. The majority of the work on stairs that we've done is uh, step dimensions, the main ones being uh, rise and going, that's um, the, the height between steps and the um, distance from nosing to nosing. Stairs are actually quite dangerous. In fact, they're probably one of the most dangerous things you'll come around uh, in a building. Um, if you think about how little time you spend on, on stairs, um, and the risk is pretty large. There's um, five, six hundred people a year that die from falls on stairs, a um, quarter of a million accidents that seriously have to go to hospitals. Perhaps one of the biggest risks that uh, we think are associated with stairs and stair falls is uh, something we call an overstep. It's where in descent, as you're going down the stairs, your foot hangs over the edge uh, of the stair. So uh, instead of making good solid contact with the tread, you find that uh, your foot uh, is, has a lot of the toe hanging over the edge. Uh, and uh, that can lead to some sort of uh, slip or fall. We've uh, done some research using uh, what we've called an adjustable stair rig. It's um, a, a rig where we can change the size of the rise and the going. So well, we can vary that uh, through a limited range of sizes. And we've looked at people uh, going up and down those stairs and trying to measure where they put their feet on those stairs and highlighting that risk. We've uh, used the um, stair rig to, to look at some of the other issues, not just the dimensions uh, as we're going. We've changed uh, the surfaces uh, on the steps to see whether they have an effect. Uh, on, on risk. We've also looked at contaminating that stair with uh, water uh, and with oil to see if we can uh, simulate the sort of situations you might get in, in the real world and the risk associated with that. We've also um, looked at the effect of the different mosings that you get on, on the stairs. That's the bit at the very end of the step. We've uh, tried different ones and seen if we can see if the risk is affected by different types of mosings. The biggest issue is about the size of the tread. Um, if, if anything, if you can get the going as big as possible, that's what improves the safety the most. Um, but as your step going gets smaller, that's where you see the interaction between the surfaces becomes uh, an issue. So when you've got uh, contamination uh, on the steps and you've got a smaller step, that's where you potentially got a risk associated with that. Um, We've also found that with the, the nosings, uh, having some sort of slip resistance in the right place, where you make contact with the tread, where your foot comes into contact with the ed edge of the nosing, that's perhaps the point where you know, some additional slip resistance can make a difference. The going on stairs is uh, controlled by uh, building regulations. Um, and at the end of the day, the amount of space it takes up determines the, the size that the stairs are going to be. So most designers try and build the going as small as they possibly can. The current limits at the moment are 280 for most non-domestic buildings. There are some situations where you can get it as small as 250. Um, we've kind of noticed that only really when you get beyond 300 millimetres do you see a real nut difference in the, the risk associated with um, oversteps. One of the uh, risks that we have noticed is uh, variation in steps. Now, again, the, the regulations suggest that you should build all the steps uh, to an equal size. Uh, the, the rise and the going on every step should be equal right throughout the flight. That's very difficult to do in practice. Um, what you find is, uh, certainly on, on some stairs, there's a uh, marked variation between one step uh, and another. And where you've got that difference, certainly when you're going from a big step to a smaller step in descent, and um, that's where the, the risk is increased. If you stand at the top of the flight, uh, a little bit back on the landing uh, and bob down, you should be able to uh, visually line up uh, all the nosings uh, on the stair. 
Um, and if you look up and down, just bob up and down a little bit from that position, um, if any of those steps disappear from your vision, that's an indication that, that step is uh, slightly shorter, slightly uh, smaller than the, the one above. That's what you're looking for to see if there's any difference. If it's all the same, they will all line up really nicely. And like I say, that's quite rare. People use stairs in a variety of different ways. It's not always good. You may have seen people, certainly like when they're rushing for a train, will uh, walk quickly, may even start running down the stairs. Uh, if they increase their speed, they're going to increase their stride length. If they increase their stride length, they're going to increase that risk of an overstep. So that certainly could have an effect uh, on the risk associated with, with an overstep. Um, and people do other things as well. You, you find they'll be uh, eating and trying to go down the stairs or um, using their mobile phone, perhaps even texting, reading a book. Whenever you're distracted and not concentrated on what you're doing, that's going to increase the risk uh, associated with a potential overstep. If you've got a good building design, you can control that and you shouldn't get water uh, onto the stairs. But we do carry water in from the outside into an internal building. When you first enter a building, you know, if it's been raining outside, there's water dripping off your clothes, off your shoes, uh, you may have an umbrella and that's going to uh, have water as well. Those sorts of things, as you're walking into the building, water will be dripping onto the floor. And if the stairs are close enough, you're going to be carrying water onto the stairs as well. So that can definitely add water to the stairs. Uh, there are other situations like um, spills, spills of drinks, people carrying drinks up and down stairs, uh, and cleaning as well. Cleaning itself um, is often a water-based cleaning system. Unless that's um, controlled, you, you could end up with water being left on the, on the steps, even in an internal situation. In terms of the overstep, it doesn't actually change the, the risk of an overstep. That's going to happen through, through normal walking anyway. Um, but what it might change is the consequences if an overstep occurs. So if you do have a large overstep, you want as much friction as you can between uh, the, the sole of your, of your foot and uh, the material under, underneath. Um, and, and you realise that you're, when you're walking down the stairs, it's not your heel that's making first contact, it's the front of your foot. So it's that friction between the, that front part of your foot and the very, very edge uh, of the step. Now we found that if there's water in that sort of location, uh, that can reduce the friction and therefore can lead to a, to a slip. Uh, similarly, if you've got uh, very, very smooth materials and there's no grip there, so instead of your foot rocking back onto the tread, what you find is your know, foot slips off and, and it's an uncontrollable uh, fall. You can also think about um, providing really good handrails, uh, handrails that are graspable so that should a fall occur, um, you can in a split second grab hold of a handrail that's at the right height and in the right place and reduce that risk, reduce the risk of a fall uh, and the consequences of that fall. Um, the other thing you might want to consider is how visible the steps are. So if you can improve uh, the contrast at the nosings and provide good lighting of course, um, you should be able to make it easier to see where the steps actually are. Certainly for those with um, poor vision, being able to see the edge of the steps is, uh, is a requirement and you often find it uh, seen as a necessity for accessibility in, in buildings. Um, and it's a good idea to make those nosings, the edge of the steps, as clear as possible so that even if everything else fails, um, visually you've got some chance of being able to see where the steps finish. Designing stairs right in the first place is, is essential. Uh, getting the, the size of the going as big as possible can make a big difference in stairs and we really recommend that that happens. Um, reducing that variation between steps as well can really make a difference on, st on the stairs and the risks associated with it. <laughs>